Hi. In this project, we're going to get some more familiarity with sinusoids. In the process, we'll also use a few more of the features of the waveform generator. Sinusoids are a really important type of signal. Engineers love them since they have some mathematical properties which make our lives a lot easier. Electrical engineers especially seem obsessed with sinusoids. Communication systems rely heavily on sinusoidal signals, and the electrical power provided to our homes is sinusoidal. Our senses also tend to interpret things in terms of sinusoids. Colors, for example, are sinusoidal light waves. We hear sinusoidal pressure waves in the air as pure tones. In this project, we'll get a somewhat intuitive feeling for sinusoidal signals by using the waveform generator on the analog discovery to apply sinusoidal voltages to a speaker and hear the result. First off, let's get a bit more background information relative to sinusoids. Now, some of the terminology I'm going to use here has been introduced already in the first arbitrary waveform generator project. The mathematical formula for a general sinusoid is shown here. The sinusoid has some amplitude A, a frequency F in hertz, and a phase angle represented by the Greek letter theta. The important thing for us at the moment, however, is not this mathematical expression, but getting a more intuitive feeling for sinusoids in general. Here's a picture of our generic sinusoidal signal. The sinusoid is periodic. The period is the time between these peaks. The frequency of the signal, as we mentioned in the first waveform generator project, is the inverse of the time between the peaks. The amplitude of the sinusoid is just its peak value. We don't have an offset in this signal since there isn't one in our mathematical expression. The phase angle just moves this signal back and forth along the time axis. For this project, we'll mostly be interested in getting a feeling for the effects of frequency on our signal. The circuit for this project is extremely simple. We just want to connect the terminals of channel 1 of our waveform generator to a speaker. Then the sinusoidal voltages created by the waveform generator will be applied to the speaker, causing a film in the speaker to vibrate, also sinusoidally, which creates pressure waves in the air which we'll hear as tones. We can implement our circuit using this little speaker from the analog parts kit. Simply insert the terminals of the speaker into the holes in your breadboard. Then connect channel one of the AWG, the yellow wire, to one terminal of the speakers and ground the black wire to the other terminal of the speaker. Remember that any voltage created by the analog discovery is relative to analog discovery's internal ground, so typically we'll have to connect ground to any circuit we build. This isn't the only way we can implement our circuit. There's also a headphone jack on the back of the analog discovery. If we want, we can plug some headphones into this jack, then the waveform generator is internally connected to the speakers in our headphones according to the previous circuit schematic. For this video, I'm going to connect a set of speakers which have their own power supply and volume control to the headphone jack. This is just so that we can adjust our volume to get a level that will record well to video. First, open the analog discovery waveform generator. Click on this sine wave icon to create a sinusoidal signal. Since we're going to be listening to our signals, we want to set up a frequency range which corresponds to a reasonable range of audible frequencies. I'll set the minimum frequency to, say, 200 hertz, and the maximum frequency to 10 kilohertz. We're mostly interested in the effects of frequency, so I'll rather arbitrarily set my amplitude to 4 volts. We want a zero volt offset since the sinusoids we've been looking at so far have a zero average value. Now select a low frequency, say 200 hertz, and click on run AWG1 to hear our signal. Since the signal is sinusoidal, we should hear something that corresponds to a tone. Increasing the frequency reduces the time between peaks of the sinusoid, which means that the signal changes more quickly so the tone becomes higher. Alternately, reducing the frequency produces a lower tone. Now that we have some experience with sine waves, let's look at one way to have the waveform generator change the frequency for us according to some set pattern. One type of signal whose frequency changes with time is a sinusoidal sweep. These types of signals are also called swept signs or chirps. Swept sinusoids change frequency linearly with time. This plot shows a sinusoidal sweep. The frequency starts out low and increases with time. Changing the frequency linearly simply means that the rate at which the frequency is changing is constant. 
the analog discovery's waveform generator can very easily generate swept sinusoidal signals for us. In order to create a sinusoidal sweep, click on the Sweep tab on the waveform generator. To choose a sinusoidal sweep, select Sine under the signal type. We can also create sweeps using a variety of other common functions. The waveform generator allows us to change both the frequency and the amplitude of the signal with time. To sweep the frequency, click on the Sweep button so that it says Sweep On. The parameters of the sweep are set in the frequency row. You choose the frequency range and the time over which the sweep occurs. Let's choose 200 hertz as our initial frequency, 10 kilohertz as our final frequency. Now we want our sweep to occur slowly enough so that we can hear the difference. Let's change the duration of the sweep to two seconds. Changing our amplitude of the signal is selected with the damp button. Turn this either on or off. The associated parameters are in the amplitude row. You select the initial and the final amplitude and the time over which they occur. We don't want to vary our amplitude, so I'll turn damping off. To hear the signal, click on Run AWG1. The sound starts at a low tone and the frequency of the tone increases as the time increases. Once we get to the high frequency, the process starts over.